Well, I'm back at this incline shaft I found a couple summers ago, and uh, we are finally going to get down here. It goes down about, about 45 feet, and then there are some branching tunnels to the left and the right, so we're gonna check it out. Yeah, this mine is really unusual because you can see here the different layers. There's that solid rock and then this granular layer, and they alternate all the way through here. You'll see this as we go down. That's, uh, that's delaminating right there. So we're getting closer to the bottom. I'm about two thirds of the way down, or maybe halfway down. And uh, a tunnel goes off there to the right, and then to the left. Let's go check it out. Okay, I have reached the bottom. Looking back up towards the portal, you really can't see James and Kelly and Jeff due to the glare. But yeah, there is a tunnel here going that way and uh, a tunnel behind me here going that way. And uh, I think everybody else is on their way down. So this is the tunnel to the right, and uh, when I was here in the summer two years ago, massive amounts of cold air were blowing out of this mine, but we are here in the winter months, and that's not the case. The mine is sucking air in, and I've heard that's really common with caves and mines, that in warmer months, cold air is expelled, while in colder months, these openings uh, inhale warm air. So we're headed that way. Yeah, you can see on the tunnel wall here, these white marks are the pickaxe marks from when they dug this by hand. It's pretty amazing. That's why these tunnels have such a round shape to them, because it was all done by hand for the most part. Oh, yeah, it definitely does something. It goes up here, too. We'll continue on that way. Here's an example of gobbing where they stacked the rock up. There might have been a tunnel back there that they quit using, so they backfilled it. That's usually what they did in these mines. But we're headed that way. Look at that. So we're continuing on. A lot of rodent droppings. That's a good sign the air is good. But yeah, look at this tunnel. All these marks from the pickaxes. Okay, this is either backfilled or a collapse. We're saving the bug. <laughs> All right. Okay, there's the entrance, and we're gonna head down this other tunnel. This way. So a couple nails here in these old timbers have square heads, so that really dates this mine as being really old. And right next to those is a bigger modern nail with a round head, but these timbers have been here for over 100 years, if not longer, probably 120 years, something like that. But there's the original timbered arch. Okay, continuing onward here. It's very hard to film and crawl over this rubble at the same time. Well, that was a stope at one point, but it's pretty filled in. keep going that way so we find ourselves in this tunnel or drift that on the right you see all this re retaining wall these are just pretty much tree trunks with very little lumbering done milling done on them and uh, holding back 
all that waste rock. And uh, that's how they did it. And it looks like maybe one of the timbers right here where my light is might have broke and that caused all the rock that was stacked up behind it in that void right there to tumble down into the tunnel that we're in. So if all of these support timbers would suddenly give way, we would be instantly buried in a landslide consisting of rocks like that. Let's keep making our way down here. So continuing down here in the rotating wall, you see a gap. I've seen this before in other mines where a, a wall like this will have a gap. Probably if so miners could access the stope that's up there. And a stope, remember, is the underground cavern that remains after the miners take all the ore out. They call it a stope. Stopes can be different sizes. And uh, these aren't that big. But, yeah. And James is down there checking out the tunnel. Let's go catch up. So we found this old blue can. Looks like it says Boston Cube. Q-U-B-E. I'll have to look that up. Let's flip it over. See anything on the, back the color's better on the back, but uh, that's just land down here. So yeah, we're here at a timbered section and uh, there's an ore chute right where my light is, but a lot of collapse, but check this out, how they put the timbers together with that L cut. Did you see right there? No bolts or screws, that's just how they did it. Same thing on that side over there so kind of cool to see that and these aren't cut boards they're tree trunks and then right above us this is really kind of fractured it's unstable so here's this big ore chute coming down from the stope that's to the right but it's clogged as usual and there's the chute gate and uh, check out the timber here is a tree trunk same thing over here, but the cross piece is this big, thick board that was milled. And it's got some indentations there. I don't know what that was for, but... Um, and then above me are just small, slender tree trunks holding up massive amounts of waste rock. And uh, there's a timber retaining wall and gobbing. <laughs> 